just when you thought it was safe for another bad movie night. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 ridiculous shark movies. Smile, you son of a bitch. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're ranking the most over-the-top or notoriously crazy flicks involving killer sharks. For the record, we're not saying we don't enjoy some of these movies, or even legitimately dig them. However, our choices all have to possess some sort of ridiculous premise that makes them stand out from the crowded school of shark flick competition. How big is that thing? It was the largest shark that ever existed. Number 10. Hammerhead Shark Frenzy also known as Shark Man. Did you know sharks never succumb to disease? Jeffrey Combs was no stranger to playing mad scientists prior to signing on to Hammerhead in 2005. After all, Combs was already a cult sensation, thanks to his performance in the horror classic Reanimator. Who's going to believe a talking head? Get a job in a sideshow. Hammerhead benefits greatly from its casting of Combs as the lead villain, whose obsession with curing his son's cancer leads to him turning the boy into a vicious shark human hybrid. I created the perfect organism. My God, King, you've lost it. Meanwhile, the crew of Hammerhead takes their cues from Jaws and show the titular creature only sparingly, using point-of-view shots and brief glimpses to hide the shoddy CGI work. Still, Hammerhead is still more competently made than many other films on this list, so that has got to count for something. Everybody, get away from the water! Number 9. Super Shark What the hell is it? Whatever it is, it's coming back. Dear God. We've already mentioned shoddy CGI once in this list, but buckle up because we're going to be referencing that a lot here with these movies. Case in point, 2011's Super Shark, which couldn't seem to be bothered to even attempt anything approaching quality, and seems to be proud of that fact. Nothing to worry about. Sure, some of its lead actors seem to at least be trying to keep a straight face with the ridiculous material on hand, but the simple fact is, Super Shark rips off its plot from Jaws, adds nothing to the genre, and exists in its own vacuum of idiotic entertainment for an easily appeased audience. Number 8. Avalanche Sharks They've tasted human flesh! I know! I've seen it before! Do you like your bad shark movies to buck the aquatic trend for something a bit more original? If so, the next film on our list is for you. Avalanche Sharks froze the ocean over for its take on a fish feeding frenzy, as terribly animated sharks swim through the snow in search of their prey. Get out! Now! 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 now. <laughs> go! 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 Oh, that was awesome! <laughs> The overall effect is somewhat similar to 2012 Sand Sharks, in that they're moderately well shot during the dialogue scene, but the actual creature effects are so abysmal that they make the end results absolutely impossible to take seriously. Number 7. Mako – The Jaws of Death Hey, what do you know? We have actual sharks featured in our next film. No CGI nonsense here. Mako The Jaws of Death is also one of the few legitimately enjoyable films on this list, as it actually arrives with an inventive premise. Richard Jekyll's Sonny seems to possess a telepathic connection with sharks, and the film uses this idea to portray them as sympathetic victims of humanity. There I found that I had a decision to make, one that would affect my life from that day on. This is solid drive-in fare all the way with tense underwater photography and Jekyll's straightforward performance to hold the film together. If you're looking for a 70s shark flick that tries to do something other than ape jaws, then this Mako is for you. All that fuss over a lousy shark. That guy's a nut! Number 6. Two-Headed Shark Attack The Asylum is well known to schlock movie fans as purveyors of shamelessly low-budget, tie-in cash-grab films known as mockbusters. Now, Two-Headed Shark Attack may not have been riding the coattails of any specific film when it hit rental and VOD in 2012, but it definitely has all of the Asylum's trademark ticked boxes. Mayday, please, anybody there? 
I'm sinking! Middling to downright bad acting? Check. Gratuitous TNA? Double check. Shark effects that look like the unfinished work of a first-year graphic design student? You betcha. Then again, it is called Two-Headed Shark Attack. So what were we really expecting? Yeah, well, it's been a pleasure, guys, but uh, see ya! Number five, Jersey Shore Shark Attack. Hey, isn't that Vinny stuff? Which Vinny? Vinny no neck. No, bro, Vinny bananas. Hey, have you ever wondered what an awful shark movie and an awful TV series would do if they somehow inhabited the same universe? No? Well, neither have we, but we're gonna talk about it anyway. Jersey Shore Shark Attack is perhaps the film with the least pride in what it does. Cranking out a premise that rides on the wave of a popular reality craze and combines it with the laziest shark movie tropes imaginable. Ah! Sharks! The acting is amateur hour, for the most part Jack Scalia still delivers, and the effects are some of the worst ever put to screen, leaving this as one ridiculous shark movie best left for chum. Number four, Mega Shark versus Giant Octopus. Captain, I'm picking up a massive underwater disturbance. The Asylum returns yet again on our list, this time with the first in their series that pits a Mega Shark against various mutated creatures in a fight to the finish. This first fight was titled Mega Shark versus Giant Octopus and delivers pretty much what you'd expect from the straightforward title. It's nowhere near as ridiculous as future installments would get. And hey, it stars pop singer Debbie Gibson and Lorenzo Lamas of Renegade fame. So that's something, right? Honestly, fans of campy shark flicks could do worse than this one. But yeah, we'd still recommend you watch any of the Jaws movies instead. Number three, Ghost Shark. Ladies and gentlemen, the great white shark. Nature's perfect killing machine. Until me and my daddy whipped his ass. All right, we'll give this one an A for effort. Ghost Shark at least tries to do something new with an established genre, which was no mean feat when it hit TV screens in 2013. The ghost effects, to their credit, could have been a lot worse. And it looks like most of the folks involved with this one, from cast to crew, are trying their best to have fun with a silly premise. Does the idea of a dead shark haunting the living make any sense? No, but who cares? Ghost Shark was made to be enjoyed with friends, drinks, and one giant grain of salt. Ghosts are real. As real as the lies this town was built on. Number two, Sharktopus. Oh no! Not like this! Ah! Roger Corman is an industry icon a filmmaker and producer who gave many Hollywood superstars their first shots in the business. He's also a man who knew how to make money, thanks to a career producing some of the exploitation world's most enjoyable films. Sharktopus was produced by Corman for the Sci-Fi Network and was just one in what had been decades of the Corman factory's conveyor belt of killer beast flicks. So is the film as fun as the man's 70s and 80s output? Well, no. But there is a knowing nod and a wink to the proceedings here that make the idea of a shark and octopus hybrid just that much more enjoyable to watch. Before we name our number one bit of shark bait, here are some hungry honorable mentions. <laughs> Number one, Sharknado. Come on, you knew this had to be number one, right? Sure, there had already been tons of low budget shark disasters prior to the release of Sharknado in 2013, but rarely had one entered the public consciousness in quite the same way. 
The mainstream media, for one reason or another, picked up on the ludicrous premise of shark-infested water spouts flooding the city of Los Angeles and earned the film a slow burn of success. The storm's dying down. How can you tell? Not as many sharks flying around. The Sharknado series even managed to earn itself five sequels, which is probably more than anyone at Sci-Fi or the Asylum expected when they greenlit the film for development. Good on you guys! It's feeding time. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.